good morning students today class we have to discussing about signal our main theme of our subject is what is the signal transmission one out to using in communication at the transmitter section we have to radiating the signal at a some strength in terms of powers the power is a watts like uh, one watt two watts uh, 10 watts like that when we transmit the power at a transmitter to receiver how much of power you can assign at a transmitter point the value is reaching or not the value is reaching the receiver or not the main theme of our subject is we are mainly using the probability theory are a random variables and stochastic process in signal transmission we can doing the number of trials in this trials how much of energy we can assign at a transmitter point it is reaching the destination or signal what is the signal we are studying about the signal the signal is a physical quantity that can vary with any one of the independent variable or a parameter here the independent parameter is a time displacement and frequency we are giving that is a independent parameter sir is a time and a frequency and displacement the signal can change in its characteristics based on this three three independent parameters here the parameter is independent it is not depending but we are studying about the signal the signal is mainly using in communication if the signal is a physical quantity that can carry the information can carry the information the information is a more important role in a nowadays here we are having that some of the differences between the information and data first of all what is a data data is a meaningless suppose here the data we can calling is a raw material so 10110 1, this one is a data it doesn't having any meaning but we have to consider the information the information is hang that meaningful suppose a is sleeping here the word is indicating the meaningful you say that the meaningful is a information the meaningless is a data meaningless is data and meaningful is information here the signal is transmitting at a transmitter point to receiver point here at a transmitter how much of power you can assign the power is reaching the receiver or not receiver or not based on the number of trials we are giving the more power at transmitter point the power is reaching the receiver then you can fix the power value is this much of quantity we are giving at a transmitter point it can reaching the receiver this one is a two dimensional signal the two dimensional is having that so only the two parameters one is magnitude is amplitude and another one is independent parameter based on the application here i am taking that is a time parameter the signal is varying with respect to time here in bottom you have to see that it's a multi dimensional signal multi means the more than one more than one signal we are calling a multi here the multi dimensional signal is having that is a one signal red and green these are the mainly three different signals is transmitting from transmitter point to receiver point or using em waves those are electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves here the signal is containing the electric field as well as magnetic field electric field as well as magnetic field the combination of electric field and magnetic field signal is transmitting from transmitter to receiver transmitter to receiver here how much of power we can assign to transmitter that much of power is reaching the destination or not 
is deciding by the number of trials. In which trial we are getting to the exact power at a destination point, that power we can fix it at a transmitter in order transmitting the signals from transmitter to receiver. Here the main intention of our subject is the signal transmission from transmitter to receiver. That's why I have to discussing about the signal. I am repeating once again, the signal means it is a physical quantity that can vary with any one of the independent parameter. The parameter is a either time, frequency or displacement. Here in this one, we have to see that at a transmitter, we are radiating the signal. The radiated signal, it can reach in the receiver or not. It can be checking by the number of trials. In which trial, the power of signal can reach in the destination point. That power, we can fix it. When we transmitting the signal, we must fix in the... the Here, my objective is, we can transmit in the signal from transmitter to receiver. Here, having that... Based on the signal nature, you are mainly having two types of signals. One is the deterministic signal and the second one is random signal. What is the deterministic signal? Deterministic signal already the name is indicating deterministic. Determining what of the signal is we are able to determine at any instant of time. At any instant of time, we can determine the signal. Suppose we can able to find the value of signal at any instant of time is called deterministic signal. See one example, we can take in that one discrete signal. Discrete signal. That discrete signal we are representing in terms of samples. Here I am giving one sample. The second one, third one, the fourth one. Each sample is having one numerical value. I am giving the values are 1, 2, 3, 2, this value is 1. Here you can take in that is n, discrete time. This one is a amplitude. Deterministic signal means at any instant of time, the value of signal, we can find that. Those signals is calling a deterministic signal. The example is, we have considered the discrete signal. Here, the time is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 0 time, the magnitude is 0. At 1, the magnitude is 1. At 2, the magnitude is 2. In this signal, we can find the magnitude per every instant of time. Here the bottom numbers is representing the time and here 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 is representing the magnitudes of a signal. That's why this signal we are calling the deterministic signal. The deterministic signal means we can find the the signal value at any instant of time is called the deterministic signal. The example is discrete time signal. Discrete at each time interval is having unique magnitude. At 1, the magnitude is 1. At 2, the magnitude is 2. At 3, the magnitude is 3. At 4, the magnitude is 2. At 5, the magnitude is 1. For this signal, we can find in the magnitude for every instant of time. That's why this one is calling a deterministic signal. The next one is random signal. Random signal. What is the random signal and why you can use this random signal? The random signal, it is not possible. You can take in the signal value at any instant of time. Is a quite opposite to deterministic signal. Well, you can see that one example is a belongs to random signal. The random signal like this. 
planets. Here in this direction, you can take in that magnitude. It's an amplitude. In this direction, you can take in that it's a time parameter. This one is an example for random signal. I'm repeating once again the random signal we are defining that is not possible. You can take in the signal value at any instant of time. Those signal is called a random signal. The example for random signal is this one. Here we are representing the signal in terms of its magnitude as well as time parameter. If the signal is completely hung that the fluctuations and the first one is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this. In this signal, we can't able to find the signal value at every instant of time. That's why you can call it that this one is a random signal. Coming to the next one, the subject is random experiment. Random experiment. What experiment is defined that in which experiment the actual outcome is not now as before. Is not now as before. That one is called random experiment. You can see that an example for this one. You can take in that it is tossing a coin. Tossing a coin, you can get in the the sample space values are head and tail. Head and tail. We can identify which one is up here when we are tossing the coin. We can't determine that. We not know before it appears. That the examples of random experiment is tossing a coin and rolling a die. Tossing a coin and rolling a die. In order to take in that is a rolling a die. The possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is for coin and bottom one is for dice. Here the random experiment is containing the random variable. How you can define the random variable? Already in last class we are discussing about random variable. Random variable we are defining that it is a rule that assigns the real values to each possible outcome of a random experiment. Here the random variable variable is one of the element in random experiment. If the random experiment we are classifying to mainly two parts. The first part is counting and second part is measuring. First part is counting and second part is measuring. What are the counting events or counting experiments is available? Those are belongs to one category. For example, we can take in that the tossing a coin. Tossing a coin. In this tossing a coin, we are counting the numbers. What are the possible outcomes is available? We are counting it. The second one is rolling a dice. Rolling a dice. And after rolling the dice, also you can same repeating the what are the process we are having for a coin, the same process we are maintaining for second case. That's why these two are belongs to counting category. The counting category we are calling that discrete discrete random variables. Discrete random variables. What are the counting events is available in a random experiment? Those are belongs to discrete random variable. The second one is measure. What are the measuring parameters is available in a random nature? The measuring parameters are first one is height, height measurement. The height is day to day it is increasing. At the same way, the distance, the distance measurement is also be varying. And time, the time is always rotating in clockwise direction. Suppose you can observe in a clock, the clock is having the numbers 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In this clock, we are having that. These are the indicators. 
it is always rotating in a clockwise direction. This entire one is a continuous process. What are the elements is belongs to measurement? Those are calling you continuous random variables. Continuous random variables. The random experiment is mainly having two parts. One is a countable part and second one is a measurable part. The countable part is having some of the examples. The countable means what are the experiment outcomes is a countable. Those are calling a countable experiments. For example, tossing a coin and rolling a die. For the second category, we are having that measuring elements. The measuring elements are height and distance and time. These three are the measuring elements. These three measuring elements is belongs to continuous random variable. Coming to the important parameter in probability as well as random variables is sample space. Sample space. The sample space we are easily defining the all possible outcomes of a experiment is calling the sample space. Generally we are writing that the sample space we are representing with S is equal to suppose we can take in the coin in a coin the possible outcomes are two we are writing that head tail head tail here I am repeating once again the sample space is having the all possible outcomes of an experiment. Here the sample space we are also classifying to two types. Those are first one is discrete sample space. Discrete sample space. The discrete sample space is having discrete type of possible outcomes. The discrete sample space further we are classifying to two types. Those are finite discrete sample values and infinite discrete sample values. Here the discrete sample space is having the discrete possible outcomes like sample space S is equal to H comma T. These are a head comma tail. For a rolling a die, the sample space you are writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the examples for discrete sample space. Coming to continuous, the continuous sample space is having infinite number of elements within a range. We have to we are having the two types of uh, discrete sample space. The first one is a finite discrete sample space. For finite discrete sample space, the name is indicating itself. This having finite number of possible outcomes. Or we are seeing that example like if we are rolling a die, the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This one is an example to finite discrete sample space. For infinite discrete sample space, already the name is indicating it is having the infinite number of elements. Infinite number of elements. Which sample space is having infinite number of elements or possible outcomes that one is calling infinite discrete sample space. Here it can be representing S is equal to the set is starting from 1, 2, 3 up to infinite. Up to infinite. Coming to the second category it is a continuous sample space. Continuous sample space. The continuous sample space is having infinite number of elements within a range. Within a range we are representing is x of s is equal to s the s values from 0 to n. 0 to n. For this second representation it is having the infinite number of elements from this range is 0 to n. 0 to 10. Coming to probability. In this probability, we are having the one of the important uh, topic is pack of 52 cards. 
Here, what are the cards is available in a pack of 52. Here, totally, the pack is containing the 52 cards. Those 52 cards, we are getting the some partition. The first partition is black cards. First partition is black cards. So, black. And the next partition is red cards. So, red cards. The totally 52 cards, we are making the partition. The 26 is black and the 26 is red cards. In this 26 black cards, we are having the separation. The separation is 13 cards. So, as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And jockey, queen, king. Up to these 13 cards, this belongs to class. This is a class. And the remaining 13 cards in black category is belong to spades. This are a spades. In the spades also we are having the first one is a as remaining all our numbers up to 10. Remaining three cards are jockey, queen and king. This totally 26 cards we are making the two partitions. One partition is belong to class and the second one is belongs to which one? The spades. The second one is belongs to spades. Coming to red category. The red category is having the 26 cards. In this 26 cards, we are making the partition. 13 cards is belongs to horse symbol. And the remaining 13 cards is belongs to diamond symbol. Here also be the first card is belongs to us. Remaining are numbers up to 10. After that, Facing cards. The facing cards are jockey, queen, king. Coming to diamonds. In diamonds also, the first card is as remaining are numbers up to 10. After that, remaining three are the face cards. Those are jockey, queen, and king. Here, the totally behind the 52 cards. Among these 52 cards, we are making the partition. The partition is 26 black cards and 26 red cards. After separation of black and red, we can make in the, the individual separation for these two colors. For black cards, we are making the partition. Once again, I am draw, draw the flow chart for these 52 cards. Totally, we are having the 52 cards. These 52 cards we are making the partition. Twenty six black cards. Twenty six black cards and twenty six red cards. These twenty six black cards furtherly we are dividing to two parts. Those are Thirteen clubs. Thirteen clubs. And uh, remaining thirteen is belongs to space. Thirteen belongs to space. Coming to red cards. Here the red cards also we are giving the partition. The first partition is thirteen cards are heart symbol heart symbols and the remaining 13 cards are belongs to diamond symbols diamond symbol this is a flow chart for 52 cards the pack of 52 cards here the 13 cards each 13 cards we are calling one suit the one suit is having the one suit we are having the first one is a as and the remaining is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
up to 10 these are your numbers after that we are having the facing chords are 3 those are king queen and jockey these three are you are calling a face cards why are you calling these are face cards these three cards only have the face symbol that's why we are calling these three are face cards now how you can pick one card among those all cards totally 52 cards is available among these 52 cards we are having to pick any one card take any one card how to find the probability first of all you know that what are the cards is available in this pack we are easily finding the probability this is the structure for 52 cards okay up to now today class we are discussing about seeing that today class signal definition signal definition we are defining that signal definition is the physical quantity that can vary with any one of the independent parameter like time displacement frequency after that we are saying what are the differences between the data and information what is the difference between the data and information here the data means is a meaning less information is the meaning full after completion of this one we are making some discussion about what is the two, two dimensional signal and what is the multi dimensional signal two dimensional and multi dimensional and what is the main intention of our subject at a transmitter as well as receiver transmitter and receiver after that we have to discussing sample space sample space how to define the sample space already you know that that all possible outcomes of a experiment is called the sample space in this one further we are having the two partition one is belongs to discrete sample space and second one is belongs to continuous sample space. Here the discrete sample space for the classifying to finite and infinite. Finite is, is having the finite numbers, infinite is having the infinite numbers. After that, we are making some discussion about pack of 52 counts. Pack of 52 counts. Pack of 52 cards. What are the cards is available in a pack of 52? We must know that what are the cards is available. We can easily do the probability problems on this pack of 52 cards. Remaining thing we are discussing in next class.